I'm here with my buddy Benji, uh, Basenji, isn't that a great name? Uh, Basenji is actually one of the uh, few, uh, they're the only breed that doesn't actually have a bark. They have kind of a yodel. He hasn't done it for us. Hopefully we'll get it on film. Uh, he does not like his kennel. And so this video, we're going to go over how you can help your, uh, help your dog create a positive association with the kennel. He's a puppy. He's, you can see he's very playful. Um, so I have some high value training treats here. I have the chicken liver and I want to create a positive association with this. Now, he spends too much time in his kennel, which I've talked to the guardians off camera crash. Um, your do no dog, puppy, or adult should ever spend more than four hours in a stretch in a kennel at a time. It will, long-term use will start releasing cortisol, which is a stress hormone into his blood. And uh, that, create, that kind of creates that twitchiness, and they just won't want to go in there. So um, we've come up with a new word for this. So if you've been calling it kennel and your dog doesn't like it and you're going to do this exercise, come up with a new command word, a funny command word. We're going to use the word palace. So the first thing we want to do is the dog to walk into the kennel without any hesitation. So uh, I don't know what the other word was, but he probably wouldn't go in there anyway. So what I'm going to do, it's going to prove me wrong, uh, Benji, is if your dog is very fearful, I'm just going to throw the treat in front of the kennel. And I'm not saying the command word yet. The command word doesn't come until he goes in the kennel. Now you're going to see his back legs kind of looks like he's stretching out to steal second base. Um, well, I don't know. I haven't done this yet, but a lot of dogs do. So let's bring you over here, Bench. Like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Cast or palace. So whenever he licks up the treat, we're going to say the command word. Palace. Now we got all four and we didn't have a lean. Now a lot of dogs, this is pretty fast. Some dogs have a really fear, uh, uh, deep fear of the kennel. Uh, won't go all the way in their palace. And so if you have to, just put him here and keep breadcrumbing him further and further and eventually put it right in here. You just got to stick his head in palace and then one paw two paw three paw you want to keep on doing this until eventually the dog will go all the way in without any hesitation all the way to the back of the kennel palace that's pretty good this is a lot faster than normal for a dog you're really fearful it won't be this fast palace and try not to throw it like that you want to try to throw it so they have to go all the way in now uh oh i forgot there's a couple tricks you can do if your dog's really fearful of kennel you can do this, and we'll, yep, you're not going to go straight to the source, but I like your, your initiative. So what I'm going to do uh, for this exercise, if I can get it right, and you bend the sucker a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, so what I do, and I prefer these wire ones. If you haven't bought one, get a wire one rather than a plastic one. So a lot of the times what I do is like this. And he's a, oh, they went that did there. And for him, you gotta try to put him in the middle so he can't quite get to them. Um, but what you wanna do is put about four or five treats in there. You wanna create a longing to want to go in there. Now, while he's kind of, we're creating a little bit of motivation, and he might be able to get some, these guys are pretty smart. Uh, something else you can do is get like a bully stick, drill a hole through the side of the bully stick and get a zip tie and zip it to the very bottom of the kennel. So he can go in there and chew on it only while he's in here. Most dogs don't like the kennel for two reasons. Number one, I'm restrained. Number two, the only time I put in here is when humans are leaving. So you need to have the dog practice being in the kennel while you're home. And the exercise I'm about to show you will allow us to achieve that with both of the things that he doesn't like no longer at play. So basically, um, uh, the marrow, you can also do a marrow bone, drill through the marrow and again, zip it towards the back of the kennel and, so, and leave the door open. So he can go in there and chew on it as much as he wants. And what we're really looking to accomplish is have the dog practice being calm inside the kennel. Uh, a lot of people, their dog starts busting out and they get clips and, uh, and people ask me like, how can I get a stronger kennel? I'm like, well, if your dog is crying out and saying the panel is freaking me out, you wouldn't say, I'm gonna, how can I get a stronger straight jacket because my kid's not listening? We would find out why they're doing it and try to address that problem. So now that he's kind of pining to go in there, we're going to open it up. Palace, 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 palace. So now he's happy to go in there and he's content and, and he gets all the palace, all the treats, and he's lingering and he couldn't be happier. So when I do this, now I'm going to kind of transition into a kind of a crouching position because I don't want to just make the uh, transition all the way. Palace. Oh. Be careful when you do it. You don't do exactly what I just did and have it throw outside the kennel. And I'm going to have to do a little more adjustment here. There you go, buddy. Palace. So now if there's any hesitation, your dog is stiff or they're doing that lean, leg lean, keep doing this until they go in like this. Next step is I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna block the exit of the kennel with my feet. Now, I have kind of big clown feet, so I'm turning them to the side. Um, some people find that using a tennis racket can help. What I wanna do is I'm helping him practice being in the kennel, but the door is open. 
I'm blocking him with my feet and don't let him do that. You can go like this if you need to. And watch because, again, they're crafty. If he gets out, once they start getting out, they're going to continue to try to get out. There we go. So he can't stick his legs out at all. I'm not going to let him out in this video until he SITs. But I'm not going to tell him to SIT. If I tell him to SIT, he's following a command. Now, he's indicating he wants to get out. What I, but he's trying to force and take his way out. I want him to learn that surrendering and being calm in the kennel is how you get out. So as soon as he SITs, I'm going to take a step backwards and let him out. But I'm not going to, I have to wait. So when you do this at home, uh, I should have thought this before I have to use the bathroom. No, don't. Always make sure you use the bathroom first. Have a glass of water or something. See your eye. You have to outlast the dog. If it, uh, the record for me for this is one hour and 15 minutes for a boxer. Uh, hopefully it's not going to be that for this particular, and that was to get the dog to lay down, which is the second stage. So I'm going to describe these while I'm talking to you. The first stage is we want to wait until he LAYs. And he's trying to, again, take his, uh, or, you know, force his freedom out by scratching at me and doing all these things. The only way, and I'm not telling him to SIT, because if I tell him to SIT, it doesn't mean anything. When he SITs, I'm going to immediately call uh, him, a step backwards and call him out. Now, the second stage for this is I would do this and then wait for him to LAY. And again, not telling him to LAY. And for him, you might want to get a tennis racket. And if you get a tennis racket, make sure there's strings in it. Mm -hmm. I had a woman that did this, and she's like, the dog just keeps on coming out of the kettle. And I'm like, you're holding the tennis racket blocking you. And she goes, yeah, he just runs through it. I'm like, she finally sent me a video. There was no string in the tennis racket. So he can't step any paws out of it. And the instant that he SITs on his own, he gets freedom. And after you practice enough, they'll start SITing faster and faster. You don't want to go to the second stage, which I'm only going to verbalize to you, because I won't be able to do it, and it'll just take forever. But you don't go to the second stage until he goes in there and is SIT right away. After a while, he'll realize, as soon as I SIT, I get freedom. Once that's the case, then you SIT and make him wait one second after he SITs before you let him out. And don't let him stick his head out like that. There you go. You need to turn it, huh? It's like, well, I spend a lot of time in here. So the second stage is when he, as soon as he LAYs, then we let him out. Now for me, I had a dog that went through $2,000 leather couches. After she did it the second time, <laughs> expensive, um, I started kenneling her. And I started doing this technique. And it got to the point where I could actually come home from work, open the door, go in the bedroom, bathroom, take a shower, uh, go change clothes, go in the kitchen, make my dinner. In the middle, when I get done eating dinner, I would say release, which was her release word. And the door is wide open. I'm not even in the room. And she learned that I can't get out of there until I get the release word to come out. Yeah, do you have questions on anything else? Because I want to do another video at the end where I try to summarize all this. But if you guys have any other questions, this is dead time. I might as well use it. So like, uh, for going back to the sleep thing, uh -huh. should he have, should I invite him up or should I get him his own bed for the room? For I wouldn't go to inviting him up because I can just, as determined as he is, I just don't see the... <laughs> We, I just look at the juice for the squeeze. Yeah. Yeah. We um when we got him as a puppy, we tried to put him in his kennel, and after like two hours of him whining yeah, and so pulling, we finally. Well, like you said, sometimes I let him out just because I'm afraid he's gonna hurt himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me a workout, buddy. I didn't get my interval training. I'm gonna get some. This is actually <laughs> good for my glutes. <laughs> release. So it'll take some time. And we're editing this video. You, it, it, this is probably about 30 minutes that this one took. But the next time it should take go a little bit faster. And again, immediately after this, throw another treat in there. See how there's a little hesitation before it's in? So you want to keep on repeating this so he don't recognizes just because I go in the kennel uh, or we were doing this exercise and they're standing next to it doesn't mean that I'm always going to do this exercise. Also, when you're kind of hanging out and like uh, right, the couch is basically where the camera is, have this thing right here for now, and just, you might want to tape something so that they don't bounce out of it. Watch the TV, everyone just throw the treat in there. Just like when you're watching TV, again, we want to be going in there, something good happens, palace, I forgot, make sure you say palace every time he licks it up, and then he gets to leave. All right, Benji, let's do a front-facing camera, and then we'll wrap this one up, because this has been quite a while. Sit. This is Benji, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if your dog is fearful being in the kennel.